Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sever, and today we're investigating a quite important concept in finance and investment management, that is, how to measure the liquidity or illiquidity of a particular stock. And today we're going to investigate that and apply the liquidity measures for two famous yet slightly different companies. We have got the stock of Apple, which is quite a large company and quite liquidly traded company, and a smaller startup-like company such as Beyond Meat that had its IPO not so long ago and is probably is trading less liquidly than uh, the juggernauts of the stock market like Apple do. And here we will study the liquidity or illiquidity of stocks using the well-known Amihud's liquidity measure. And we will use the insights from Amihud's own 2002 paper and a subsequent revision of the methodology by Barak et al. in 2021. The logic of Amihud's illiquidity measure is simply to relate the absolute return of the stock or the absolute price change in the valuation of a stock to its daily dollar volume. Basically, how much liquidity can the market absorb at a point in time? How much of the company's stocks need to be traded to initiate a price movement. And obviously, the more responsive the absolute return is to the change in volume, the more illiquid the stock is. Simply because liquidity risk when investing in stocks is simply the risk of losing on price changes when you impact the market with your own trade. For example, if you want to sell a billion dollars worth of a particular company's shares, you might trigger a price movement that would decrease the valuation of the share as the market cannot absorb $1 billion immediately, and that would lead you to selling your shares at a loss. Analogously, if you want to buy 1 billion shares worth of a particular company, that would trigger an upward price movement in this particular stock's price, simply because the market cannot absorb a billion dollar worth of buying orders at the same time, and it would mean that you will lose on some of the value by having to pay more for these stocks. And that's exactly what the illiquidity measure tries to capture. So we have to simply calculate daily dollar volumes as we're interested in liquidity risk per billion dollars of um, volume, isn't it? Simply because we are not interested in buying one share of Apple or one share of Beyond Meat, we're interested in liquidity risks that's associated with investing the same dollar amount in both companies, in our current example. So we have to calculate dollar volumes at every single day, and then we have to calculate the absolute returns in every single day, and then calculate the average across our sample, and our sample contains two years worth of observations, 504 trading days to be precise. And here is where the revision of Baradehi et al. comes in handy, as in their paper, The Night and Day of Amihud's Liquidity Measure, they argue that calculating the returns as our usual close-to-close -close returns is actually counterproductive for the uh, illiquidity measure calculations, as by calculating the close-to-open absolute returns, we are able to match the return observations with volume observations. As these volume figures we have got here in shares are capturing the day trading and night trading is omitted from these quotations. So we would be making a like-to-like -like comparison and capturing the less noisy illiquidity or liquidity measure by using the open to close absolute returns. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. We are going to calculate the absolute close to open return of Apple and Beyond Meat the dollar volumes in the respective days, and then proceed with calculating the Amihud's illiquidity measures and estimating the liquidity cost of investing various dollar amounts into both companies. So first of all, for the absolute return, we need to apply the absolute function, obviously, and then calculate the close to open return, which is closing price divided by opening price minus one. 
and we can enforce the same formula for Beyond Meat as well. And now, to calculate dollar volume, we have to multiply the volume in terms of shares by the price of the stock. Uh, to make it uh, more objective and uh, less influenced by the price movement during the day, we can multiply by the opening price instead of the closing price. That's quite uh, usual in terms of calculations. And then, to convert that into billions of dollars, we can divide that by 10 to the 9th power, basically divided by a billion, and you could simply uh, input 1 followed by 9 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or you could simply put 10 to the power of 9. And we see that in the very first day on 3rd of September 2019, there has been approximately $4 billion of Apple stock traded on the uh, American market. So now we can bottom like it all the way down and get day-to-day uh, -day dollar volume and corresponding absolute price changes or absolute returns. We can also apply the same formula to Beyond Meat by the virtue of the fact that our columns are arranged exactly in the same order and bottom right click it as well. And now, having all of our preparations done, we can calculate the illiquidity and liquidity measures. The illiquidity measure is simply the um, sum or the weighted average of our absolute returns divided by the uh, dollar volumes. So we can simply calculate the average of our absolute returns divided by the respective dollar volumes. And that would give us the estimation of how much on average does the Apple share price move when we induce a $1 billion worth of a trade. And we can also initiate the same formula calculation for Beyond Meat, referring to Beyond Meat's absolute returns weighted by dollar volumes. And we have got the relationship between those two illiquidity measures, stating that for Beyond Meat, the illiquidity measure is 50 times higher than for Apple, meaning that Beyond Meat is approximately 50 times as illiquid as Apple, or by the same token, Apple is 50 times more liquid than Beyond Meat, which is quite an understandable result. We were expecting a large established company such as Apple to be more liquidly traded than a startup that has just recently undergone an IPO such as Beyond Meat. Now we can convert those illiquidity measures into liquidity measures by dividing one over those. So again, the more illiquid the stock is, the less liquid it is. So there is a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship here and you can simply divide one by illiquidity to get some representation of liquidity. And we can see here that similarly the Apple's liquidity measure is a thousand and Beyond Meat's liquidity measure is 20. However, let's stick with illiquidity as it has some very uh, interesting interpretative value that the liquidity measure, which is quite synthetic, does not have. The illiquidity measure here, and that is actually the reason why it's reported as percentage, denotes by how much the price would move subject to a one billion dollar volume. So if you want to buy $1 billion worth of Apple by how much the share price would increase, so how much you would lose by having to pay a higher price, and respectively, if you want to sell $1 billion worth of Apple shares by how much the price would tank, giving you a loss uh, as a result of this liquidity risk. So let's simulate two scenarios. Let's simulate the scenario where we just investing or selling $1 billion, uh, dollars worth of Apple or Beyond Meat shares, and we can calculate our liquidity cost by the virtue of this relationship um, assumed to be linear in the Amihud's methodology. So we can just multiply our volume in billion dollars onto the illiquidity in percent and have our liquidity cost for Apple at 0.1% and liquidity cost for Beyond Meat at 5%. And now we can have a dollar representation of this liquidity cost by multiplying our volume onto the liquidity cost in percentage. So we can see that for Apple, we are losing a one thousandth of a billion, so basically a million dollars when we want to buy or sell one billion at exactly the same time. And for uh, Beyond Meat, we are losing 0 0.05 billion, so 50 million dollars if we want to buy or sell a large chunk of Beyond Meat valuation. 
um, if I recall correctly, Beyond Meat is valued at around $10 billion, so that would represent a significant stake at this company being sold at one single point in time. So it's unsurprising it would trigger such a massive uh, liquidity cost, such a massive share price reaction due to the imperfection of the market and its inability to absorb so much at exactly so much immediately. However, if we uh, want to buy or sell more in terms of dollar value in either Apple or Beyond Meat, for example, $5 billion, then our liquidity cost jumps to 25 million, so 0 0.025 billion, $25 million for Apple, and 1.25 billion, a whooping amount, 25% of our uh, position value would be wiped out by the liquidity risk in case of a small company such as Beyond Meat, and that tells you why liquidity risk can be a major consideration when trading smaller companies or even companies that have just recently undergone the RPOs where the markets are not as liquid and cannot absorb large volumes in short periods of time. And that is one of the reasons why some researchers believe smaller stocks have higher returns in the longer term, simply because part of it can be attributed to higher liquidity risk investing in smaller stocks entails. And that's all there is for measuring liquidity risk and explaining the liquidity cost of investment in different companies. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make this any further suggestions in videos for business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.